All right, so Terraria put in this new boss, the Empress of Light, and she's a fucking pain in the ass. I have never had so much fun and hatred at the same time defeating a boss in Terraria. But you know what? I figured it out. I grinded hours and hours and hours and studied all of her attack patterns and figured out the best way, uh, well, I guess my best way to beat her. Unfortunately, you do have to get some pretty hard to get equipment. This isn't like something you can get straight out of uh, mechanical bosses or is it Plantera that she comes after? I'm not sure. I think you can get her after Plantera, but we did, um, well, I yeah, we ended up doing Golem and Duke Fisheron before her just to get more equipment. Along with that came Pirate Invasions and uh, Martian Invasions, which are very crucial to this. So... I'll list all the equipment that I actually use in this in the description, but I'll also talk about it really quick. So let's see. Barrier Platform, Terra Spark Boots, Necromantic Scroll, Pygmy Necklace is the other one. Shield of Cthulhu, Hercules Beetle, and Papyrus Scarab. They're all plus 4% damage rolled. You don't need to run for defense because you're not going to get hit, or at least you're not supposed to get hit. Um, so you just roll straight up damage. You want to get as much DPS as possible. So, like I said, Ruthless Xeno Staff plus 17 damage is the highest DPS Xeno Staff you can get. The Tsunami, I just have a basic one. I actually didn't even roll this one, um, mostly because I duped it because I'm in, in journey mode and I just didn't think about it. That would make it easier, though. The Tsunami you get from Duke Fishron, pain in the ass to get. You can use other weapons and other builds, but I want to clarify one thing before we get into this review is that my run is purely based off of damage timings, and what that means is that I'm trying to damage her the exact amount that I want at specific times, which I will show in the, the VOD that we're about to look over. Um, and this setup that I have, I learned the timing for this setup. If you want to do another setup, it better have pretty close to the same DPS, or you need to learn your timings more, you need to learn more moves. The thing with this setup is I minimize the amount of moves that I have to dodge from her because I kill her and I do damage at certain instances the right amount of time. So anyways, I'll get more into that when I'm doing VODs. But Tsunami and Xeno Staff are the only two things I'm going to use. You can get both of those before you kill her. Um, and then let's see, what else do I need to cover beforehand? Potions. I run... Here's a bunch of potions I don't use. Um, I use those for other things. I don't use them for her just because it's, I don't know, I, I kind of, I just don't. The only useful ones that I found, summoning potion to give me one more minion, uh, archery potion to increase my uh, tsunami DPS, rage potion for DPS, wrath potion for DPS. And then before I start, um, I don't know if it's going to show it in the video, but I do use a bewitching table and ammo box. Bewitching table, obviously one more summon. That's going to allow me to uh, maximize DPS as much as possible. So, all that being said, again, I'll put everything in the description, but let's go ahead and look at this fight. So I get my stuff, I pop my potions, I look at the distance I get from it, I get it to where the left side of my platform is just barely off screen. I'm treating it as if this part right here on the bridge is not available to me. Um, and that's just for reasons I don't really feel like going into. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the edge of my bridge. I'm trying not to go past that. So I put it just slightly to the left of my screen and get my summons out. The lace wing does disappear if you throw it out in daytime. But you do have like a couple frames where you can quickly swap to a weapon and shoot it and kill it. I've seen some people talk about you have to kill this thing at night and then don't damage her until morning. And that's bullshit. So you'll notice at the start, I wait. I know she has a time where she can't do anything and she's not doing anything to me, so I'm just standing still. I don't want to mess up my positioning. My positioning is very important. Every single step I take is calculated. So I start running right about the time she activates. Uh, Shield of Cthulhu straight into a full sprint. Once she starts her first attack, you want to do one more dash, which I do there. And then you just wait till these get close and you can just keep running in a straight line and just kind of jump into uh, kind of this 
kind of pattern right there. So like in, in that, I, I don't know what to what to call that, but you want to you're gonna end up jumping like that. And then once she starts this, you can kind of hook around, go around her like that. So she starts her tackle. You want to keep going up until she passes under you. Because otherwise she's just going to fly right into you. So you just keep going up with your platform or your wings until she passes under you. Once she goes under you, you can drop down. Her next attack is going to be this. I think it's called Sundance, which is this. I hit her with specifically one arrow. And in fact, earlier... I think uh, we'll be able to see that I made it a point to only shoot her with one arrow prior to this as well. And I'm going to kind of talk about this. So let's see. So I start running. I hit her with one arrow to begin with. I don't shoot her. I don't shoot her. I don't shoot her. I don't shoot her. I dodge everything. I shoot her once prior to her Sundance, and then I don't shoot her again. And this is for the timing. And you're going to see the timing that I'm talking about um, once she gets closer to half health. But I'm doing this because I want to manage my DPS to be uh, to hit right where I want. And that's why I said if you want to switch up your classes, you better get a class that does similar DPS to this one so that you can replicate this run as easily as possible. So the Sundance is pretty easy to dodge. Her first attacks come out like this, and you know her next beam is going to come out kind of like in the middle. And so you just want to stay in between uh, this guy and the imaginary next one that's going to be coming in. Uh, so that's pretty easy to do from just running right when these lights start to retract that's when I start opening fire and I can just go with balls out all I want now now I, I've waited long enough to where my attack timing is perfect if I hit her with all my arrows it's gonna work out after her Sundance she goes into a tackle so again we know tackles are very easy you fly up and away and then once she goes under you you change directions all right so dodged it now her next one, she's going to throw out spiraling stars, which I think is called like rainbow dance. Um, so you see them right there and they spiral out uh, kind of like this. And the really annoying thing is if you stay inside this spiral, you have to dodge another attack while also not touching the lines and the stars. And that's just too much of a fucking pain in the ass. So I'm doing what I call a dash boat. And this is the boat that you get from uh, one the boss in the pirate invasion. And this thing goes crazy fast. It usually has a big ramp up speed. But if you shield of Cthulhu into, into getting onto your mount, you start off immediately at maximum speed. So you'll, you'll see how fast um, you'll get to max speed with this. So I just call that dash boat because you're dashing with shield and you're hopping onto boat. So, dash boat, max speed, you're going crazy fast, you get out of spiral range, that's the most important thing, because once you're out of spiral range, you no longer have to worry about that attack, you can forget about it and worry about her next attacks. Uh, so, these are coming in, again, you just keep running, you wait, and right until this one's about to hit you, that's when you start jumping. If you jump too early, they will curve into you and they will hit you. So I jump, she goes over me. Her next attack is a lance. So the way I want to approach this is, uh, I can't zoom out because this is a video, but um, like basically I want to be moving down to the left like this. And once the attack begins, then I want to go this way and then kind of do like a J maneuver like that, kind of like a Nike symbol. And we're gonna look more in depth on that, right? So I'm going, once the lances start, I drop from the platform, and I want to start hooking like this. I want to do a dash boat to get a lot of speed this way, and then I kind of want to come up afterwards. So, dash boat, I go under this platform, I keep going like that, and as these lances are spawning, I start going up. If you notice, I'm trying to uh, hit perpendicular to each of these lines because that will get me away from it the fastest so once she starts her attack move I can hop off my boat and just use my platform for my height um, I decided to stick on boat for some reason but it's fine you can do that as well so her next attack is going to be another rainbow dance this is why I want to dash boat away from it 
Um, in fact, I dashboarded very fast. You almost didn't even see it. Just enough to get me out of the range. And then I'm just kiting. I'm waiting for these bolts to hit me. And there's actually times where I stop attacking because I want her above half just barely by the time she tackles me. I want her just barely above half. Um, and why is that? Well, we're going to see. Because she's at, she's basically at half right now, and her next attack after that is going to be Sundance. And this means, once she, because what happens is when she drops below half, she goes into phase two. But she can't go into phase two while she's doing Sundance. So if I get her into this animation, she's stuck there until it's finished, and I get to just dump DPS into her as much as I want. So I'm dumping DPS into her, dumping DPS... Now she starts phase two. We've knocked out that much of her health bar for free in phase two. That's enough that we don't have to worry about it. And in phase two, that's a lot of fucking health. So her first attack after this, you want to drop one platform to dodge the first, drop another platform to dodge the second, and you're just straight line downwards. Once you're dropping from this one, you want to start hooking to the left. Just walking to the left dodges that one. Then you start jumping for the next one, still moving to the left, right? And then you kind of just climb up like that, keep going to the left, and you want to make a circular pattern to come back around. Because on this last one, you want to start, you want to do a dash boat. Because after this last one, she's going to do um, the prismatic bolts. And here's the thing I'm dash boating this way already, like I'm doing the commands because I know because of my timing that's like i've been saying this whole time timing is important because of my timing that she's going to come up here and then start her prismatic bolts right so i can dash boat into that and not worry about running into her so i get off boat and i just run i kite the bolts jump up and around just like i always do um, so those are pretty easy to dodge you got to be able to dodge these easily by now so her next thing is another version of this lance and this is the kind of the same thing with the other lands where you can kind of do this uh, this type of pattern with it, uh, where you dash boat somewhere around here, and you're able to break away from it. So just kind of kite in the lines. Now this is a kind of a weird spot. This seems like possibly a misstep by me that I'm now surrounded. I have lines over here and lines over here. But this is precisely why I want to dash boat and get out of there. I want to get to this empty zone as much as possible because this is all bad and this whole zone is free. So if I can dash boat into that zone, it's it's basically game, right? So I dash boat, break out of it. I get off of boat for just a second just so I can get my dash again. Um, possibly not even necessary, but these bolts I'm trying to outrun. Because right after these bolts, she's going to do a sun dance. So if I can just beeline it this way as fast as possible and outrun the bolts, I can deal with the sun dance by itself. So I'm able to get out of range of the bolts. She's done her sun dance, and now again, she's stuck in this animation, and I can just finish her off. So if I don't kill her by now, if I've for some reason just not done enough DPS, if I didn't get the perfect run this time, her next attack is going to be another lance. And so when the lance happens, again, what I'm looking for is I'm going to start walking this way a little bit, just slowly. And then once the lance starts, I drop, dash boat this way, and go upwards. Now, this is kind of where I ran into trouble. If you go that long, I've noticed if I keep going upwards from that lance, she just teleports right on top of you and you die. So once you dodge the very last lance, I'm thinking probably get off boat, start falling, and then dash boat to the left, possibly. that That's the only thing I can think of. <clears throat> but I'll go ahead and replay this um, just so we can watch it one more time in, in real time. And you can kind of see everything come together. So I do one shot to begin. I don't want to touch her because I found out that this timing works best for this build. I shoot her once, kite the dance, I know she's going to tackle, then dash boat to the right to get away from spiral, 
and just keep running, run out the prismatic bolt, jump over tackle, Lance is coming, so do the, the Nike symbol dash boat over her, dash boat out of the spiral, kite the prismatic bolts, keeping an eye on her health bar so I don't put her too low, Sundance comes out, just dump damage into her, dump damage into her, and now she's on to phase two. So I want to get into a safe spot for phase two where I have room to the left and to the right of me. Go in a circular pattern to dodge that. Dash boat to get some speed to get away from the prismatic bolt. Give me some breathing room. Uh, again, circular slash Nike pattern for that. Dash boat to kite out the bolts. And then just sit there and fuck her up during Sundance. So hopefully... Uh, that is good enough for people to replicate or at least help you get onto the right track. Using these types of patterns, um, these types of dodge patterns on our attacks is going to be absolutely crucial. Now, again, I've learned these timings for my builds. Hopefully you have the right concepts and the right ideas to look for how you should beat her. You can try to replicate this as well. You can try to replicate my run exactly if you can manage to get all this all the equipment. I know the uh, Tsunami can be rather difficult to get. I know some of these pieces can be kind of tough, but um, I, don't, I don't think it should be too unreasonable to ask. Um, so that's gonna probably be it. So hopefully that helps.